everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another anime review. I just recently watched Oshiete Galkotran or Teach Me, Tell Me Galkotran. And of course, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go to myself just yet, but Galko is the blonde on the right and Ojo is right behind her. And Otako is on her left and of course Sonic Me is a little bit above her. And um... I'm not sure what the name of the raven hair is behind her, but then you got the three boys <laughs> standing behind them in class, like they always do. And it's a slice of life comedy, but there are so many endearing things about it that make it stand out from other animes I've seen. It's only 12 episodes and it's very, very short. But I absolutely loved it. It's, it's one of those animes that has a good moral story to it and a good um, ethical setting even though the girls <laughs> they talk about some rather uh, delicate issues it's still very funny it's just very normal how typical girls would talk to each other and I got a <laughs> I got a friend who is uh, you know a guy but he talks to me that way and I'm thinking eh. I mean, he's he's kind of like my brother. He's like the brother I never had. So, we're very open. It, <laughs> it is just so funny. I think this anime, this is my friend. <laughs> this is exactly how he talks. But, um, <clears throat> the anime in and of itself is absolutely sensational. And in one episode, it's an origin story about how, how Otako actually became Otako and how she... Um, learn to stop being so judgmental and become a friend of Galco's. And Galco really didn't have a nickname as of as of yet. And so many people think the worst of her because of her um, outward appearance, her her busty, voluptuous nature. And um, they just they perceive her as this very loose, guiado girl. Uh, gyaru, I think uh, that means kind of like slut. I don't I don't know what that means in Japanese. All I know is it's not a very <laughs> complimentary asset or attribute for somebody to be calling you that. But in that episode, that was episode um, 12. I think it was the last episode. Yeah, it might have been where she says, you don't think a gyaro could be a friend with an otaku? And I thought, aww. <laughs> she's breaking so many barriers there were so many things she likes to be prepared she's sort of like a girl scout she had so many items available for everybody in her class and she goes out of her way just to to be kind to others and um she's very thoughtful she's very matronly and the only thing she wants to do is become a mother someday that's that's her ultimate dream and i thought doesn't almost every girl want to be a mother at some point in time in her life? I mean, it's just a very basic, natural um, need or want. Actually, not even that, but a want of most women in this world. They they want to have family, and um, <clears throat> is from what I've seen I have a friend at a work she said it's the hardest thing that you'll ever do but it's very rewarding and I always think about that I know someday it will come to pass for me but for the time being I'm enjoying being single and anyway of course <laughs> the stereotypes it's is so funny the boys are just typical boys and they're doing psychological games with each other and it's just, it's so enjoyable. It's it's very fun. I haven't laughed that hard since this art club has a problem or Haganai. And I have Haganai next, which I haven't watched yet, but I will eventually. <laughs> it's up there with the rest of the things I haven't even looked at. It's, I did uh, an inventory and I found out I found uh, over a thousand, I'm serious, over a thousand DVDs and about um, 50 something VHS tapes, some of them are still in their eggshell protector, and those I know are worth a lot more if they're Disney related, because I looked it up, I did some research, and there are, I'm thinking there are a few buyers that would pay top dollar for 
receiving one of those in mint and I take really good care of everything I collect because I'm an otaku and proud. <laughs> I mean, if you look at my collection, I'm very meticulous about, I'm very careful, but <clears throat> nothing I have has any ding scratches or dents and I like to keep it that way. And I'm very careful about my books too. I try not to break the spine too much and you know, I'm just very gentle with everything I own. That's why I've had shoes that have lasted me for 10 years and beyond and clothing I still have from 1998. Yeah. Anyways, um, exceptional sensational series, two thumbs way up, five stars, hands down. Uh, Galco, she's, uh, an aspirational character. She is, um, she's very outgoing and, she just wants to help people and she doesn't really care if, if people make compliments about her e-cups because she's used to that. She's, she's just, um, <laughs> she is, um, she's got assets. <laughs> she's very curvaceous and she's very proud of that. I mean, there's an episode where they go to the pool and Otako was getting hit on <laughs> by grade schoolers because unfortunately she packed pheromone spray instead of sunscreen. <laughs> and later on that night she gets into the bath and, ah, oh, it's too hot! <laughs> but it, it's so funny. It's just hysterical and so uplifting and lighthearted. And it's just, it's a reminder to us that we can't judge a book by its cover you have to look beyond that to the heart of a person and they don't know what Galco goes through on a daily basis. Her sister's the one that's the, the real Gyaro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she's um, out in her sister's um, school uniform doing role play, if you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just so funny. It's one of the best animes I've seen in a good long time. I'm glad I finally saw it. I saw a reviewer who did... I watched a reviewer on YouTube who talks about uh, Galco's weaponized thickness. And I thought, I agree with that. Even though I would never really use that term. But that's what it is. And um, she... She just is a very... Um, thoughtful person. She's very altruistic and um, she likes a good anime. <laughs> Girl after my own heart. She'll stay awake and she'll watch an anime from first to last episode even if it <laughs> kind of creeps into her school schedule and of course she comes to her class late and near the end of the series she comes in, spoiler alert, early and uh, Sensei says, he kind of almost does a double take and he says, Oh, why are you why are you on time? Why are you ahead of time? Why are you so punctual today? <laughs> it's not like you, Galco, but anyway, you can't really tell much about a person just by what they wear. For instance, she had to wear a, a man's t-shirt just because she has broad shoulders and she's big breasted and uh, nothing else will fit her, <laughs> poor thing. But it just it talks about the 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 trepidation, the the woes of uh, women who are um, <clears throat> well endowed, <laughs> and I've never had any issue. I've always been able to to shop for size C cups and not worry about it. But I can't imagine for Galco, she's an E cup, so I can't really imagine. I can't even fathom what it would be like to have E or even bigger than that. Because uh, from what I've heard. They're hard to come by. <laughs> very, very difficult. I mean, it's almost like you have to special order stuff like that <laughs> from special specialty stores, and sometimes they're very expensive, and thank God I don't need to do it. But um, that's about all I got to say, and hopefully if you are a fan of anime, you would be willing to check it out. Because it's well worth it. It's an absolutely sensational anime. It's very colorful. It's it's very um, enlightening. And I just, I love that quote. The The one quote that I really love from the series is when she's talking to Ojo. And Ojo is just a, Ojo is very intelligent, but she's so 
airheaded. <laughs> she just, she wants to be like Galco and Otako and they talk to each other and they're just chatting, you know, idle chatter as she comes up with this, the weirdest medical information. And uh, Galco says to her, you don't need to worry. You don't need to, you don't need to talk like that just for our sake. And she says, don't, don't worry about it. You just, you just be you. <laughs> and I thought, aw, yeah, this is so true. And she pats her head and this is such a sweet, loving, endearing relationship between the three of them. And of course, Sonic Meat comes in later and she's even bigger breasted than uh, Galco is. But she can run faster than anybody else on the track team, which goes to show. She's very fit, even though she might seem a little bit chubby. Um, there's another character who's into the occult. And then there's another character. Uh, yeah, the, the occult character is into death metal and uh, black, black metal bands. And <laughs> she, she kind of walks with a slouch and she has pierced ears and purple hair. Um... And then the other girl, like I said, the raven hair with glasses. I don't know her name. I'm thinking she's with Charo, the the blonde. And and Charo, <laughs> he's the one. Oh, the the three the trio boys. They they all have a thing for her. They they're all just kind of mooning over her. And <laughs> it's it's just so cute. It's just so typical of high school boys and uh, their hormones. But it's it's really a good series and. I highly recommend it to anybody, especially if you're a big fan. And uh, Otako's just um, riveting speech about what makes an otaku is probably one of my other favorite moments of this entire series. But until next time, I shall see you later. Live long prosper. Ciao, Titi.